Well, hey there, Mission Control. Been a while since I've done a video. Life's been pretty crazy. Figured I'd give you guys an update and let you know what's been going on. Well, as you know, we've shut down operations. Uh, last video, we talked about that. And uh, that means all the plants and everything are microgreens are out of the system. Now we're just keeping the fish alive uh, as we go through winter. Um, got some more preps I need to do for winter, but I think we're mostly there. Uh, the system uh, should be able to do fine as we go through the winter months here. It's starting to get cold. We've already gotten down to our first freezing, uh, quite a few freezing mornings uh, that have gone uh, lately. I think we're up to like eight eight mornings where it's been freezing, so it's getting cooler. Uh, right now outside it's cloudy, it's rainy, uh, it's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and inside the building it's almost 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We've removed the shade cover from the, uh, the top of the building, and it's pretty darn comfortable in here. This morning I'm just coming out here to feed the fish. I actually have the water on too. Uh, fish seem to be doing healthy. Just uh, have turned off the dehumidifiers in here so we're not recapturing any uh, any water right now. We're just uh, letting it evaporate and then recondense on its own. So the water level is getting a little low. Whoa, they're really happy in there. Look at those guys go. I got the lunkers. Yeah. Well, since we are uh, shutting down officially the microgreens, we've actually been able to sell the uh, fridge. Uh, that we had. And we've also been able to sell off some of the tables that we had in here, the stainless steel ones. These were all needed for the microgreen processing. Uh, you'll notice up top there we've had some wind damage. Uh, had a really big storm come through and that's the windward side of the building and it came in and popped the uh, insulation off. So I got to get up there and fix that. Uh, we got strawberries and stuff still growing. The trees are still going. We definitely have a nutrient issue. I just have had no time to actually deal with any of the issues that we have had out here. Um, had a major product launch at work uh, that took a lot of time. I, I haven't been able to work out here at all. Um, and then actually my grandmother just passed away actually just this morning. So uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to be out here very often right now, but let's go over some of the stuff uh, that we have done uh, since we last spoke. <clears throat> Most of what I've done is look like this. Just lots of thinking. Um, I went in the house and I spent probably about three weeks uh, building an engineering model of the entire system, everything. Um, you guys know, uh, if, you're, if you're newer to the channel, you may not remember or know, but I actually submitted a provisional patent for the processes that all come together here. Um, Others have submitted similar patents uh, and have had them awarded. Uh, so I have less than 365 days remaining to submit the full patent uh, for what I have called the Genesis system. And uh, so I went in and I started doing all the math behind the model or behind the processes and kind of reconfirming a lot of what I did before, but also refining and getting a lot more detail actually created a, a model that starts at a plant and figures out how much light it needs uh, through all of its different growing phases, how many calories that produces, and then just expands it out. So you have to create a whole bunch of different crop types, you know, different diversity of crops, you know, like tomatoes and cantaloupe and lettuce and this and that and the other thing. And you come up with what I call a series of design reference diets. These would be mixtures of different plants that produce different yield of calories per harvest uh, per day uh, that ultimately lead up to 2,200 calories per day of food. And you can use these design reference diets to figure out total square footage, or I should say the range of total square footage that you need, total power that you need, how long it takes to grow things. Basically just working out all the math of everything, every single step of a grow operation. And I got that all figured out. Uh, it was really cool. I, I built it using model-based systems engineering. So every little thing is its own little model. And then the math runs uh, and adds all this stuff up to, to tell you an answer. And anyway, without getting too nerdy on you, um, it ends up coming up with an answer that I had before, but I made the mistake of having tunnel vision. So I wanted to share that with you guys so you don't make the same mistake. Power. 
indoor growing is all about power, pure and simple. And this is something that I knew from before, but I, what I made the mistake of was I just had the spreadsheet and I calculated out all this stuff using just a spreadsheet. It wasn't as, as detailed as what I had uh, that I ended up doing. And it, it ended up saying, you know, it just, it takes so much power to produce the electricity for the building, for all the grow lights, the heating, the cooling, dehumidification, everything that you need, plus the power for your home uh, and fuel for your, your system. You know, the digester behind me is supposed to help with that. The mistake I made was I, de I, I figured out that you can't do anything uh, as far as like solar and wind. It, it just, it's not dependable. You can't, can't do it and you have to have these huge solar panels and lots of wind turbines. Um, can't use wood. Uh, you'd have to have like 22 cords of wood every year to produce the heat necessary uh, to heat a facility uh, like of this magnitude. Um, and then, so I went with a digester and the tunnel vision that I had was the digester will produce enough fuel for my truck to go back and forth to work every day. And that was a huge thing that I wanted to do is get the fuel for the truck. But the tunnel vision that I had, if you're not familiar with tunnel vision, it's when you get either so excited or you're so super focused that you lose track of the big picture and you just focus on this little, little pinpoint and that happened to me. So if you're gonna do something like this, it's all about power. Uh, don't get tunnel vision. And kind of the bottom line, my model came out to be, and it's been since verified by some other folks as well uh, that I found, I've done similar analysis this, it, the sun just produces too darn much energy. Uh, I think it's about 150 to like 200 uh, watts per square foot. Now plants need around 30 to 50 watts per square foot. Uh, and you gotta use the sun. Unless you can find a different power source, something that doesn't exist today, um, like nuclear fusion, quantum energy, something like that. You just, you can't grow enough food per person using traditional forms of energy. It, it can't be done. You need 372 kilowatt hours per day uh, per adult having a 2200 calorie per day diet. Uh, the 2200 calories, that's a health department type of if you're between the ages of 25 and 40 and you're a male, that's the amount of calories that you should be consuming per day. So you can get away with less and that would reduce your energy, but not by a whole lot. So that power thing really, really drives everything. 372 kilowatt hours per day. That's about, depending on where you live, 20 to $40 per day in electricity per adult uh, to grow the food that you need. You, you just, you can't, the sun just provides all of this for free. Um, you, you just can't turn your back on that. So uh, that has put me into a whole realm of what do we do? Uh, and I'll be honest, I don't have the full answer yet, but what I have figured out is the premise of the Genesis system works. All the different processes and systems coming together to produce fuel for your vehicle, electricity, and food work. The premise works. The basics are there. The thing that doesn't work is vertical growing and not taking advantage of the sun, meaning fully artificial uh, systems, you know, lighting. So uh, that means that you could limit where you deploy the Genesis system to places where you don't need a lot of heating and cooling because that takes energy, uh, and also where you have quite a bit of natural sunlight. The issue then becomes how do I create, how do I make land more productive? Because that was one of the things that we wanted to do with this project is we wanted to take one square foot of land and make it worth two. And the idea was vertical growing. But the thing with vertical growing is the shading effect. Let me show you what that looks like. So you should be able to see the shading effect. Up top here, I get lots of natural sunlight, plenty of sunlight to grow things with. But as soon as I do vertical growing, I have these shelves, there's a lot less sunlight in here. There's shade because of the stuff that's up on top of it. And that's a well does statement. And what we were doing is we we're using LED lights uh, to help with that. Uh, but you just need so many lights 
to uh, produce the energy that the plants need to grow, that it becomes very cost prohibitive for a single adult. So how do we deploy the Genesis system to places where you don't need vertical growing? Uh, maybe that's not the right way to say it. How do we get one square foot of land to be worth two or to double its output, maybe is a better way to say it, uh, without using vertical growing? Reason why is if I cannot use vertical growing and still do something that doubles the output of the land, I meet my requirement and I can help. If I don't use vertical growing, I need less energy and that 372 kilowatt hours per day drops because I start depending on the sun again and not on artificial lighting. Now, if you're going to Mars, you're gonna have a nuclear reactor with you, so you can probably produce enough energy to do all this. But I will say this, one thing we've learned is you cannot depend on the sun for uh, light, for solar power, and you certainly can't depend on the wind. And with the storm that we saw on Mars lately where it consumed the entire planet for I think two months, three months, that's certainly proven. So what are we gonna do? Honestly, I don't fully know what we're gonna do yet, but I do know that the system's still working. We got strawberries here. Strawberries are growing. Uh, I think we've still got the big nutrient issue here where we're not getting enough iron, so I might play around with that. I've looked at some different folks that have done different ways of growing things. We have the Zipgrow Towers. Um, ASU, I think, probably has the best solution so far, which is a, a flexible, um, what is the right way to say it? Like a trough system. It's flexible. It can deploy. It can collapse, and then it can deploy. Looks like the right thing to do. So I think I'm going to be uh, building some of those, moving these shelves all around and, and kind of redoing it. I think. Also, we're gonna be going completely away from the uh, lava rock grow media and just go to a mineralization and filter system uh, with NFT uh, type, the troughs uh, going there. Um, we're gonna play around with that. I don't really know yet. So I, <laughs> I wish I had great answers. I do know this, that as far as the real Martian challenge goes this year, I totally failed. Uh, if I was on Mars, I'd be dead. Uh, so, we should probably go back, sharpen the pencil some more and figure out what the heck to do here. I think we learned a tremendous amount uh, from this experiment, from this prototype HAB1, and I don't think we're done learning quite yet, but honestly, if you kind of feel it in the video, I don't really know what the next steps are. I'm kind of waiting on God to tell me what the next thing is here uh, that I'm supposed to go do. I think uh, working the numbers, really going over that, uh, making sure I've got everything really dialed in as far as the engineering goes um, is probably something I, I need to spend a lot of time on. Um, hmm. Yeah. Going to be interesting to see what we end up doing. Still have my big grapefruit here. It's still growing. Uh, but nutrient deficiencies, I think, are abound. And also spider mites, I think, is another problem. Yeah, I wish I had more to give you guys right now as far as an update. But we're really kind of at a strategic pause. I think that's the best way to say it. We gotta kind of regroup. Uh, I know I was fighting off the bug there for a while. I'm totally exhausted. Uh, I need to get some, some rest and relaxation. I started working out again. Uh, that's been very helpful. Um, show you guys what I'm up to there. And uh, been able to piece together a nice little gym from Craigslist. That's pretty cool. Um, and my grandmother passed away, so we'll be helping out at her place. Uh, she has a big 10 acre ranch and horses and she was 85 and just passed away. Uh, her kidneys gave out on her, uh, just old age kicking in there, but we had a great opportunity to sit and talk and uh, she was saved. Uh, Jesus was her Lord and Savior, so that was great news. Uh, it just makes it such a different, different experience. I know when my dad passed away, it was really interesting. Uh, when he was at the very end, um, he was in a lucid state and happened to my grandmother as well, so I wanted to share it, is he had, essentially, he, the only way we've been able to describe it is he had one foot here and one foot in heaven, in the next place. And he could see everybody. In fact, uh, my stepmom, Sherry, she asked him, she's like, hey, are you okay? Well, you know, what's going on? He's like, well, everybody's here. Everybody's here to, to greet me. Um, and we thought, you know, that's interesting. That's one data point, but then my grandmother uh, just uh, two nights ago, had the exact same experience. Um, people were there. Uh, very, very interesting uh, in death how 
uh, we're seeing these similar things happen. So for what it's worth, kind of an interesting story. So I'll be helping out there with my grandma's place and getting it all shut down and, uh, and, and sold. Uh, just life changes, isn't it weird? You know, life just changes. So I think that's, that's all I really got for you guys. Really haven't done anything out here. Uh, strategic pause, done a lot of engineering, uh, lots of modeling, lots of number crunching, lots of math to confirm everything. And the Genesis system, as far as its idea goes, works. As far as how to get enough power for it, that's the problem. So uh, there's some really cool research out there right now, really fascinating stuff, um, but nothing that's right here today. So I think we're gonna need to refactor and come up with a game plan that takes advantage of the natural sunlight and maybe deploys these systems just in places where there is that natural sunlight and really somewhat mild temperatures uh, or easier can control temperatures. Cause our location is kind of a worst case. We got really, really cold in the winter and we got really hot in the summer. So you have to spend a lot of energy uh, to deal with that. If you just deal with one or the other, like it's really hot in the summer, but it's perfect in the winter, or it's uh, perfect in the summer and cold in the winter type of thing, um, one or the other would be okay to deal with, but both at the same time makes it difficult. It's a hard system to design. So that's it. Thanks for following along. Really appreciate everyone uh, subscribing and sticking out with us. We're not done. I'm not done. We're not throwing in the towel. I just don't know what the next steps are. So I welcome uh, comments. Uh, I, certainly I get to tell the people who said this wasn't gonna work that they're right. Uh, it did not work. Uh, we need to uh, deal with the power problem. If I had the power problem solved, all this would work. So let's solve the problem. Thanks for following along. This is The Real Martian. Until next time, out. <laughs>